G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as the post-draft content continues. Uh, this time taking a little bit of an early look at the 2024 season and picking out some of the biggest fixtures uh, amongst all this draft nonsense that we've been going through uh, together over the last few weeks and months. Looking at 2024 and the, and the fixture release and all that stuff is something that I'd put to the wayside for a little bit. But in today's video, I'm going to go through some of the biggest fixtures coming up in 2024 that I'm personally looking forward to. And I can make a case for why they are games to watch for next year. I've tried to stray a little bit away from, you know, your classic showdowns and derbies and stuff like that. Picking out games with a bit more narrative and we've got ones that I think will also prove to be quite influential on the finals race and the premiership race etc. Now I know what you're thinking, oh this video is just going to be full of West Coast Eagles games, all the countless Friday nights and blockbuster matches we've got ahead of us. But don't stress, I already know for a fact all of you are going to be glued to the television watching the Eagles play in 2024, so I've just eliminated those from this video. Now you've probably noticed I have been making a whole heap of content on the channel lately. Uh, confession, I made three videos yesterday and made a live stream. That was an accident. I didn't mean for all three of those videos to come out on the same day. I woke up, saw that they'd all uploaded, and I thought, oh great, now I don't have a video for tomorrow. So the content train rolls on, and uh, if you want to go look at some of the videos that I've done in the last few days, by all means, do so and subscribe to the channel. Cool, so let's crack into picking out some of the biggest fixtures that I'm looking forward to. Uh, now, I did say I would try and stray away a little bit from, you know, big rivalry games that we all know are going to attract attention, Carlton and Richmond, um, you know, the Anzac Day clash. Of course, we're all going to tune into those, so I've looked uh, outside the box. But what I will say as an aside is that it is shaping up to be a pretty good year for derbies, if you want to call them derbies. Um, honestly, I don't know why West Australians say derbies. It is stupid. But anyway, I will point out that, uh, you know, the showdown has been good for a little while now, uh, but I think it shapes up to be a big year for showdowns between two sides that could potentially play finals. Carlton versus Collingwood, again, like it is a big rivalry game and it hasn't always been a good game. But, you know, these two sides are likely to be in the thick of the premiership race this year and they play in around 21 right before the final. So that'll be interesting. The Sydney derbies have been great again over a period of time now, but again, both sides could play finals. We could see some really, really interesting rivalry matchups this year. And even the Q clashes could be good this year. I know that uh, Gold Coast did win one unexpectedly last year, but if we're anticipating an improvement from Gold Coast, like we say every year, um, then we could genuinely have good uh, derbies and showdowns and stuff like that. You will notice I missed out the Western derbies in this list. Yep, moving on. Cool, so let's start from the beginning. And uh, yes, so this year, for some reason, we have got a round zero. I don't think they've called it round zero in the end, they've called it opening round. Um, look, I kind of like the logic behind it. It's, there's nothing wrong with splitting the rounds up a little bit, but just call it round one and just have only four games and then call the rest of the games round two. I don't know whether that is maybe a marketing thing. They wanna retain the round one label for round what is actually round two because more people will in theory be interested. I have no idea, but it doesn't matter. For the first time, we've got our opening round and to be fair, we've got four good games. So I'll brush over them because we already know how good these games are gonna be. Of course, two of them are preliminary final rematches, which is pretty exciting. Brisbane hosting Carlton at the Gabba. Uh, we're obviously Brisbane won that prelim, but it was a pretty good game. GWS also hosting Collingwood. So all of these games, obviously, in the rugby territories. But it's actually the other two that I'm going to be pretty interested in. Sydney versus Melbourne, uh, the opening game of the season. Obviously, everyone's going to watch that anyway. But it is Grundy versus Gorn. And there is a little bit to this in terms of a narrative between, uh, you know, the Ds, who obviously got Grundy, got rid of him after a year, played him in the VFL behind Max Gorn. Understandably so, Max Gorn is a champion. But it would be interesting to see how these two go against each other for the first time since they were teammates. There's also the added narrative that Sydney and Melbourne are potentially going to be pretty good teams in 2024. Gold Coast and Richmond is also worth casting an eye on purely because it is the first game of Damien Hardwick's coaching career at the Gold Coast Suns, and it happens to be against his old club, the Richmond Football Club. And it's going to be interesting as well. Gold Coast have actually won the last three clashes against the Tigers and probably go into this game as favorites, but it is probably going to be worth watching. So we then wait until round three and we get our grand final rematch between the Brisbane Lions and and the Collingwood Footy Club. Now, that was obviously one of the greatest grand finals we've seen in recent times. And Brisbane obviously came up short in that match, but they had won the previous six games against the Collingwood Footy Club. Playing Brisbane at the Gabba is a completely different kettle of fish, to be honest. 
Now, I'm not saying that Collingwood weren't deserving premiers or anything like that. I mean, they earned that home grand final in theory anyway because they were the, the higher ranked team. All I mean is Brisbane Lions at the Gabba will be a very tough ask for the Collingwood Footy Club and they haven't beaten them there since 2019 and there's been four losses there since. But either way, grand final rematch, you've got to tune in. Then I want to skip ahead a little bit to round nine where Carlton versus Melbourne caught my eye. Obviously, this is kind of a rematch between two late season thrillers we saw between these two clubs, including one in the semi-final where Carlton got the job done. Knocked Melbourne out in straight sets. The first team out in straight sets back-to-back uh, -back in the AFL era. They won that game 73-71. to 71. Uh, In round 22, just before that, they won a game 60-56. to 56. So another four-point win there. Back in 2022, there was also a five-point thriller. And in 2020, there was a one-point thriller here. So not only are these two teams likely to be up the top end of the ladder, they've got a recent history of playing really, really good games. Melbourne will want some revenge. I think this one will be a very juicy matchup. One week later, Collingwood host... Adelaide at the MCG. And again, I am going a little left field with these ones because it's not a typically big uh, game in terms of rivalry or anything like that. But the last three games between these two sides have been a cumulative margin of eight points. There was a two-point win last time at the MCG that Collingwood won. There was a one-point win in there. There was a five-point win in there. And then in 2021 as well, there was another game where Collingwood won by five points. So the recent history between these two sides is very, very tight. And Adelaide last year, that performance in particular really impressed me because we knew they were good at home. They're an up-and-coming side. For them to do that at the MCG and almost beat Collingwood was very, very impressive. And you get the feeling that Adelaide will be in the mix of finals again this year. So brace yourself for another tight game. In round 13, we have the King's birthday game. But again, I didn't want to highlight you know big occasion games, which this technically is. But you consider as well, Collingwood versus Melbourne, there's a little bit of a narrative here now. Obviously, there was the two thrillers last year. In the qualifying final, Collingwood won by seven points. Earlier that year, Melbourne got the job done by four points during the home and away season. And the Pies won before that by seven points, 96 to 89. So again, recent history of close games. There is the narrative of these two sides meeting in finals, Collingwood uh, winning that game in the qualifying final. And then further to that, at Melbourne's best and fairest, the comments made by Stephen May about how Collingwood you know, weren't that good. Apparently he thought Melbourne was so much better and that he should have, I quote, smoked Collingwood. So that could add a little bit of intrigue to this game. Again, two premiership contenders you'd think. In round 14, we return to the scene of the crime. The Adelaide Crows host the Sydney Swans at Adelaide Oval once again. And if you've been living under a rock, by the scene of the crime, I mean where the Crows suffered an absolute robbery. Uh, not through Sydney's fault, but obviously a non-allowed goal at the end of the game where Ben Keyes thought he'd sent his team pretty much into finals with that goal. It was awarded a point. Sydney win that game by one point. Now, Sydney have won the last four clashes between these two sides. So there was a little bit of uh, dominance, I guess you could say, but they're generally pretty good games. And again, I think these two sides going into this year could be evenly ranked. And what I mean by that is probably around the mark for top six. Sydney probably has a bit more top end potential, but either way, I'm expecting a finals-like atmosphere in this game. Cool. So those are sort of some of the home and away games other than the classic rivalry games that I wanted to point out to you throughout the season. But one thing I've also noticed by doing this video is that the AFL has done a good job, in my opinion, of jam-packing the end of the season with some really, really good games. Now, in round 22, we've got four games of interest. Brisbane versus GWS. This could be a genuine top four clash. Both of these sides obviously made a prelim and a grand final in 2023. So uh, this late in the season to see a top end clash like that potentially is very exciting. Melbourne versus Port Adelaide, another top six clash you think at the very least. Adelaide's hosting the Western Bulldogs. We don't really know. Well, both of these sides are a bit of an unknown quantity going into 2024. But again, two sides that I estimate will probably be around the mark for the top eight, if not better. So that's a juicy clash going in towards the end of the season. And then finally, North Melbourne versus West Coast. No, but seriously, that one could actually have a bit of intrigue if you were assuming, like me, these two sides would probably be making up two of the bottom three at the very least. You would have thought. So there's a chance that that is the spoon game. There it is. I worked West Coast into the video somehow. Then in round 23, we've got uh, three more good games that I think are worth watching. Collingwood versus the Brisbane Lions at the MCG. So another grand final rematch happening in round 23. Again, could shake up the finals mix as well. Essendon versus Sydney. Now, I'm not really sure about where to rank Essendon going into 2024, but these two sides do have a crazy history of having close games. I think six of the last eight games between these two sides have been decided by 10 points or less. So regardless of ladder position, this will probably be a good game. And then in round 23, you've also got a showdown where Adelaide seemed to have some recent dominance, even though Port's been the higher ranked team. That'll be very, very intriguing. 
Then to finish the season, we've got four good games in the final round, I would say. Carlton versus St Kilda, both sides were finalists this year. Melbourne versus Collingwood again. Sydney versus Adelaide, this time in Sydney. And then potentially a game to decide whether one or both teams make the finals. Western Bulldogs host GWS, and the added benefit of that as well is those two sides have a pretty fierce rivalry. So there you have it, guys. Those are some games I'm looking forward to in 2024. It is very early, but just trying to build some excitement for next year. Again, I'm not really too sure what happens next for the channel. At the moment, I'm still making footy videos as long as I've got something to say. And as long as you guys keep watching, I'll still be making an effort and maybe transition to a little bit of cricket, maybe some non-sport related stuff. We'll see. But either way, it's been a great year so far. It's been a great month. I'm trying to get it to be my best ever month on the channel. Hence me working so hard, but I really appreciate your support and uh, it's been a great ride. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.